look at this place. It's snowing. I know. It's a little winter wonderland that we're having it's right here. It's incredible in I here. I know. And we're not freezing. That's the no, good part. No, <laughs> that's because we have a 4K fireplace running somewhere around here. Exactly. And the reason why we're having this today is to welcome you, special guests, to mm -hmm. our online show named The Chat Room. Now, I'm Eva May. I'm Taran He. And for those of you who are joining us for the first time, The Chat Room is an online show where we are inviting guests from different backgrounds, professions, fields to just talk about their experiences and share their observations. Now, since the Beijing Winter Olympics 2022 are just around the corner in pretty less than 20 days. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, um, we're also having a special edition which is called Meet the Olympians. Now, as the name gives away, we're also going to invite a very special guest today to join our show to share her experience for winter sports. Sports. And our discussion will be streamed online on CGTN's website, as well as YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, WeChat, and Sina Weibo. Mm -hmm. And I hope I got everything right. I think you got everything. <laughs> we got all the socials covered. Exactly. But we are incredibly excited today to introduce our special guest. She has 45 European Championships under her belt, eight Olympic medals, including one gold at a fourth Winter Games in Pyeongchang. She is the most decorated short track speed skater in all of Olympic history. Let's give a big warm welcome to Italian national sports hero, Ariana Fontana. Buongiorno. <laughs> and Hi. ciao from Beijing. <laughs> Hi. How are you? Hi. Where are you now? <laughs> um, I'm good. I'm good. I just finished, finished practice. I'm in Bormio training with the, with the rest of my teammates. We, you know, just a few, few days and then we're going to be there in Beijing. So it's exciting. Wow, I can't yeah. believe it's happening so soon. Super exciting, super, super exciting. And how's the weather there right now? Uh, it's pretty cold, but not too bad. It's, uh, it's not really snowing as it usually does, so it's kind of weird, but um, it's okay. <laughs> yeah, we can, we can totally see training. the snow in your locker room. <laughs> Should we get to know Ariana a little bit more, though, I think? Definitely, definitely. Well, what we want to do is actually let the people know you a little bit more on a personal level. So we're going to start with a little game, which we call the 21 rapid fire questions. And what we would expect from you is we're going to shoot with questions right at you and uh, hope that you will be able to answer them within seconds and you have a time frame of exactly two minutes. Are you ready? Okay, let's Perfect. do it. We need to be sitting down for she this, I think. You gotta love the challenge, exactly. <laughs> so, music please, and we'll start rolling. <laughs> okay, first question at you. What's the first thing you do in the morning? I open my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay. That's really big. <laughs> <laughs> what do you do, yeah. Uh, what's your favorite season? Uh, autumn. Oh, okay. I okay. didn't expect that, would have okay. assumed winter. But um, name a person who inspires you. My mom. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, are you an optimist or are you a realist? Both. Oh, okay. So what was your best sporting moment? Uh, winning the gold medal in Pyeongchang in the 500 meter. Obviously. Mm -hmm. and what was your worst sporting moment? <laughs> <laughs> uh, winning the silver medal in the 500 meter in Sochi because the way it happened. <laughs> <laughs> are you a morning person or are you a night owl? Uh, neither. Neither. And how many hours of training do you spend per day? Um, between six and eight depends the period. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, let's talk about shoes. Do you prefer flats or heels? Heels. Cats or dogs? Both. Well, um, what's your favorite item of clothing? Uh, jumpsuit. Jumpsuits. And would you be rather social or would you rather be alone? I guess it depends on the situation. I like both. There are moments that I want to be with people and other people that I just want to be by myself. So it depends. Mm -hmm. Okay. So can you name us one guilty pleasure? Nutella. <laughs> <laughs> and what about the three things that you would take to a desert island? Um, a fishing rod, a sunscreen and sunglasses. Ah, okay. Ooh, I know what kind of desert island you like to go to. <laughs> well, what's your favorite sport <laughs> other than a short track? MotoGP. Mm -hmm. And what do you do? What's the best way to de-stress? Um, fishing, probably. When, I, when mm. I can and I'm by the ocean, I like to fish, so that helps. Oh, Hence cool. the fishing rod. We did well, yeah. though. We got to 16. <laughs> 
Yeah. We didn't quite reach that's, 21, that's, but it was our fault, okay. not yours. That's okay. That's definitely our fault. <laughs> We're just not fast enough. Interrupting and asking more questions <laughs> in between. <laughs> Um, so we know that you're very short on time, Ariana. Could you please tell us a little bit about your uh, profession? So for our audience at home, what is uh, short track speed skating? Um, you know, the characteristic of my discipline of short track, you know, it's speed, the adrenaline, uh, passing, and the unknown of this sport because, you know, anything can happen at any time. You could be the best skater on the ice, but that doesn't mean that you're going to cross the line first because... Really, you, I mean, if, for people that know the sport, know that, you know, every single time in every single race, something happens. So, um, you know, for athletes, they, we all need to be ready to everything. You know, we, you can plan it before, you know, you can do the stra uh, you, your strategy, you can build it, you can be ready. But then once you're on the ice, you need to be ready for anything, really. Mm. You need that fast reaction speed. Yeah, exactly. And yeah. laser focus as well. <laughs> that's, that's really, that's admirable though. For sure. You really have to be like so highly focused and concentrated. But when was like actually the moment where you realized, okay, you want to do this professionally and you want to compete? Well, um, since I was a little kid, I wanted to go to the Olympics. So probably, since, I mean, since I remember, I wanted to be an athlete and yeah, have do this as my job I guess <laughs> oh wow but then you know I was I was like 13 I think I was 13 12 13 and the national team started to like bring me in for some training with the national team and you know I was like okay well they have the coach already like looking at me having mm -hmm. some interest in me so this can really be it you know I just need to keep doing what I'm doing and hopefully you know Obviously, I was looking forward for the Olympics at home in Torino 2006. So I was like, maybe I can make it. I'm going to do everything I can to, to be there. Mm -hmm. So you knew it already from a very early age on. Is, there, is, there, is it because, I don't know, maybe somebody in your family inspired you? Or do you have family members who are very you know, into sports? I know that your dad is you know, very supportive of you. And I see like, when, I, when I watch videos of him supporting you and just like cheering in the crowd, like, yes, go Ariana, go Ariana. <laughs> like, <laughs> did, he, did he inspire you or did he um, you know, play a vital role here when it comes to your career? Um, well, there was nobody really, like, uh, into sport. I mean, when they were young, my parents, they were they were athletic, but they never really did that as their main thing. Mm. It was more like a hobby. Um, so in the family, the first two to actually do, you know, sport as a maybe a real thing was me and my brother. So oh. I think that, you know, at first my, I was, you know, looking – and my brother, because he's two years older than me, his name is Alessandro, and he started skating before me. And as a little sister, I wanted to do what he was doing. Mm. And, mm. you know, the, yeah. I, so, and then, you know, we got to skate together, train together. And then, you know, I wanted to beat him, even though he obviously was <laughs> faster and stronger than me. So uh, I think he was the one actually pushing me to be better since I was younger maybe not on purpose but you know because we're brother and sister and that you know relationship that somebody's hate and love you know mm. yeah. he, he helped he helped me to you know to wanted to be better to be a better skater every time for sure you're, you're definitely a much better skater that's for sure you're currently tied for the most <laughs> Olympic medals ever in short track speed skating. Uh, I mean, what are your expectations for Beijing 2022 now that you're pretty much standing at the zenith? Well, um, you know, um, like you said, I'm, I'm tied at eight Olympic medals with two male athletes that retired. So mm -hmm. it would be nice to beat them um, because <laughs> I, I see... The, the two of them, Apollon and Victor Anna, are, I think are two legends of this sport mm -hmm. and already be tied with them. It's for me, it's an honor. Um, but having, you know, just even just one more medal more than them, you know, it will be a huge thing for me personally. Um, but um, I think that, you know, I want to approach these Olympic Games like I did the last two 
you know, the race by race, heat by heat, um, not thinking really about the, the medal, or the, the final result. I need to be first, I need to be first in the, in mm-hmm. the finals. And then when, when I'm in the final, I will, obviously I will do everything I can to, to be on that podium. But how do you train for a foreign venue? Yeah. Well, that's, uh, you do train as if you were going to train in your own home venue. You know, that doesn't, that doesn't change. Uh, once we get there, we'll, be, we'll have enough time to change the equipment, change a little bit the blades to make sure they, we adapt uh, on, the, on the ice. Uh, where we're going so it's not it's not a big deal really Mm -hmm. you know we we have I mean I have my coach um, that he's gonna make sure that everything will be will be fine and I'll be ready well, that's that's actually very interesting because um, we've always wondered, you know, there are also athletes coming from certain countries that don't have the natural climate for winter sports, for example. Like, what do you think, what could they do or what is like your recommendation for athletes to train um, at a place where they don't have the right climate for it? Well, that's obviously not ideal because, mm-hmm. uh, you know, if you ask here and you live somewhere where you don't have snow obviously it's not easy yeah but um for us for skaters for short track skater long track skater you know we we need a venue so if you have a venue it doesn't matter if outside it's snowing or it's super hot or raining because you know you're inside so that doesn't really change Mm -hmm. i mean i think it's it's very interesting because you've had a very long journey in, in short track speed skating and you know you thought uh, you were going to retire after Sochi and then you won gold at Pyeongchang yeah. and now there's Beijing. So could you tell us a little yes. bit about any uh, <laughs> setbacks or struggles that you faced along the way? Because that was a very long journey that you've taken. Yeah, uh, like you said, I was convinced back then that Sochi was going to be my last Olympics. And I think if I would have won a gold medal there, probably that was it. But because I didn't, you know, I won that silver that I told you before that I was still not so happy about it, <laughs> even though, you know, it's still a silver medal. Um, but because of that, I decided to keep skating um, because I, you know, one of, I had three dreams uh, as, a, as an athlete, go to the Olympics, win a gold medal and be the flag bearer. And then at Pyeongchang, two of the dreams became true. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I, I really did everything I could to to be there and be ready. I didn't want to miss the chance again mm-hmm. to, to win that gold medal. And, yeah, it wasn't easy, but, you know, all the athletes struggle pretty much similar because, mm. you know, we all have to go through a lot of things. It's, you know, being an athlete's not that easy as may, maybe some people think. You know, a lot of people at first, you know, when they knew that I, I was skating, they were like, oh, that's so nice, so fun. Mm-hmm. You get to travel the world, you get to visit new places. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, but, you know, maybe I have like half a day to <laughs> go around and You're see something, you know, yeah. but exactly. So it's not just that, you know, a lot of people maybe don't understand that it's actually like a, a job because, mm-hmm. you know, like we wake up early in the morning, we mm-hmm. train, we come to the ring, train three hours, go back, eat, maybe nap, take a nap, and then come back again for three, four hours, and then it's dinner time and bedtime. <laughs> so yeah, that, yeah. that's pretty On much Ariana's it. On Instagram, it's pretty much just, it looks like it's pe- <laughs> pictures of you jogging, cycling, training, <laughs> squatting, and then napping. And, and exactly. then there are some pictures of your dog sometimes. <laughs> so, well, what, what, what do you enjoy doing then on your time off though? Like the little time that you have then aside from training? Um, well, when I have time off, I like to spend it with my friends and we usually go shopping. Um, ah. So maybe it's not so good for maybe our husbands or boyfriends because you know, they're <laughs> not so happy when we come back with therapy. so many bags. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> so, so I like to do that and... You know, obviously, if it's a time off, I like just to be lazy and maybe watch a TV show or read a book. Depends. But I'm also a pretty lazy person. So if I don't have to do something, I like to, to just chill. 
Okay. Yeah. You, you mentioned your husband earlier, and I just wanted to wrap back a little bit because uh, after Sochi, uh, a lot of things changed for both you and uh, and the way you train, and also obviously your husband mm. as well, right? Yeah, he became my coach, and you know it's not something that we decided out of the blue. It was out of necessity. Uh, the coach that we had back then. Um, lost his way so I knew I need you know obviously at Sochi didn't win that gold medal I was going for Pyeongchang and I wanted to make sure that I was going to do everything I could to be there 100 percent so I need, needed some extra help I needed that I needed help and Anthony was there we already worked a little bit together during the summer training and I like the way he we, he worked with me, the way he thinks, and that's how we started training together, and that's how I, you know, I wanted him to help me. Mm. And obviously, at, at first we were a little bit worried because you know being married and yeah. being also mm -hmm. also coaching athletes, you know, it's not gonna be wasn't gonna be easy. Um, and also like you know, if at the end of the day it wouldn't work out, you know, could have potentially be really bad for our marriage mm -hmm. but <laughs> there's a lot at stake good thing it worked <laughs> yeah but good thing it worked out pretty well you know that I won that gold medal I he promised me also that I was gonna be competitive in the thousand meter that it's the distance that I always suffer more mm -hmm. and in Pyeongchang I also got a bronze medal in that distance so everything worked out pretty well and he showed me that, you know, there was another level in me as an athlete. And that's why I wanted to keep skating and, you know, be ready for Beijing because I wanted to see, I was curious to see what other level I could reach with his training, with his help. Right. So yeah. speaking of Beijing, um, are there any athletes that you'd like to meet or any other events that you're particularly interested in? Well, I'm not sure what we will be allowed to do because uh, we don't know exactly how the COVID restriction will work for us once we're there. Um, but um, I'm really a big fan of any Olympic sport, so I'll be watching every time I could, can all the obviously the Italian athletes. But mm -hmm. you know, there's some. I'm a. I'm a also a big fan of Mikaela Shipping mm. uh, this year. And so I um, kind of like hockey too. I don't know if uh, Crosby will be there. And I'm not sure that, but mm. he will be, like, you know, someone that I would like to meet for sure. And what's the plan then for you, like after Beijing? What's, 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 what's up next then? Well, for sure, a long vacation. Yeah. Uh, we'll need it. <laughs> you will well deserve, deserve it for sure. <laughs> Well-deserved vacation. <laughs> um, and then we'll see. I don't know. Um, you know, I'll, I have a lot of people that would like to see me keep skating uh, for you know the home Olympics in 2026. Yeah. Um, 2026, maybe I will skate, maybe no, I don't know. Uh, I know that, you know, it will be the perfect way to end my career because I started skating. I mean, my first Olympic was Torino 2006. Mm -hmm. So finish it in Italy will be the perfect way. And I don't even know if there's an athlete that could say that he, she did that. So it will be pretty awesome. But um, it's four years away. There are a lot of things that needs to change. A lot of things happen lately that... Hopefully, mm. a lot of people, you know, should ring a bell, you know, in mm. their mind, and maybe, maybe it's time to change a few things uh, in this sport in any way, so that we can make things better for the athletes. So we'll see what's going to happen. I mean, it would be a very beautiful finish. You would have come completely full circle, exactly. wouldn't you? Exactly. Yeah, yeah, it will be pretty awesome. So it, it, it's in here. We'll see. I don't know. <laughs> Well, speaking of C, yeah. do you mind actually if we, well, cheekily ask you to give us a room tour? No problem. <laughs> Mille grazie. Well, and okay. it's, it's not your room as it, as it happens. It's actually well, your gym, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Well, it's just my locker room and then I walk outside and 
there's the ice rink. Oh, I see. Um, I so see. I have so my bikes. Yeah. The uh-huh. one, the green one, is the one I warm up, and it comes with me most of the time at also competitions. The wow. one in the back, it's the one that I use for testing mm-hmm. to see if I'm getting stronger. And how long do you yeah. need to spend on the uh, bikes every day? Um, right now, I'm just usually usually do like us- I use it for warm ups or just like maybe twice or three times per per week. I do I do oh, some okay. training, but like an hour, not okay. so much because obviously we're we're getting ready for the Olympics on skating. So yeah. the sure. bike, it's well, can you know it can let it be out uh, you know. It seems like it seems like other. that you prefer like more natural environments, right? Not only like when it comes to when it comes to competitions, but also when it comes to training. You're not that much of a gym rat, I've heard, as in like running inside um, of a confined. No, I, when I can, I like to be outside because you know, obviously, I'm skating inside of a building. And yeah, yeah, of course. I prefer to be outside, spend as man, as much time as I can outside because because of that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So speaking of outside, are you able to show us a little bit more of your room? What are some sort of some of the items that represent you most? Yeah, then that's the bench of my coach. It has all the uh-huh. these equipment for my blades. Um, these are my skates. Those look dangerous. Very much. Um, so. <laughs> yeah, they're really they actually reach. Really I use I used it one time to for fun to cut up cut some meat, and they work pretty well. Oh. <laughs> Well, okay. multifunctional as well. <laughs> Definitely won't be using those to shave, though. <laughs> yeah, this is my helmet. Nice. Nice. Then these are my gloves. Mm-hmm. And we, as you can see, we have, like, this little plastic. Uh, so you yeah. can, mm-hmm. They can be plastic or car- carbon. That You know, it's, the, it's on the left hand. It's the one that we put on the ice. So... Mm-hmm. When you go into the we don't get stuck on the ice. Nice, those are I, beautiful. Yeah, because like in, in um, what, so what's yeah. like the main difference? <laughs> of probably like the blades, right? Between um, like track and uh, f- uh, figure skating. W- are there any other um, well, like major differences that so, you would want to point out? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we can see that they're razor sharp. <laughs> Well, our blades, uh, compared to figure skating, um, short track blades are longer and thinner. Mm-hmm. Uh, figure skater blades are shorter and more thick and more round because then obviously they need to jump. For yeah. us, we need to glide more on the on the ice, so that's why we also have a, a longer a longer blade because we need to make more speed and glide on the ice, and that having a longer blade helps that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And compared to long track skater mm-hmm. um, skating, this part in the back, it, oh, for I them, see. it's not attached to the to the boot. Oh. Right. It's right. called clap. It's okay. called clap skate because when they push on the straightaway, mm-hmm. um, the blades in this way it stays longer on the ice and it helps gliding even more. I see. Mm. So what would you say um, are the hallmarks of a good short track speed skater? What do you need to be to be a competitive athlete? Um, well, I think that obviously you need to work hard, <laughs> but that's for every athlete, um, you know. But um, to be a good skater, a speed skater, you need to, I think that I want to use uh, something that my, my coach always tell me it's been um, agile, mobile, hostile <laughs> because you, like you need to be predator, really be ready for anything. Yeah, pretty much. You need to be ready for anything on the ice. You need to, you know, be able to see, understand what's happening around you so that you can move at the right time, mm-hmm. make the right move at the right time, pass when you need to pass or just wait, you know. Um, you need to be really aware of what's of, of your surrounding or what's happening, what the other skaters are, are doing, or trying to anticipate also what they're planning mm. to do. Yeah. It, it yes, seems like exactly. short track speed skating is is an incredibly dangerous sport. Yeah. You're going at super fast speeds. You have to make split second decisions. But how do you stay focused, and more importantly, how do you stay safe on the uh, on the ice? Well, I try to not think about the dangerous side of this sport because, you know, like you said, it's not, 
it's not sometimes it's not safe because you know we have these super sharp blades we reach a speed of 50 55 k per hour mm. uh, on a really Crazy. small track mm-hmm. so when you fall if you fall by yourself it's less dangerous even though a lot of time people get hurt mm-hmm. um but when you when it happens that you fall with some other skaters you know i always try to push them away because mm. i don't mm. want to like i said they, they could get hit by their blades or get cut or just even fell on top of each other you know and it's not fun when someone fall on you and no. they put their knee in your back or your belt or on your side so it's it, it's better, you know, push them away. Stay away from me. <laughs> I have a question. No like, when do you actually get disqualified? Because I thought that maybe like, you know, when you're literally like going into a curb and you're being pushed away by another person, you're not being disqualified. It's still part of and rule of the game. Or, or how does it work? Um, no, there are rules that, you know, if there is a contact, um, one of the person will get uh, disqualified most of the time. Mm. Um, Depends who's the one creating the contact, um, the speed, the position of the of both skaters. Um, so the, the, it's not a really easy job for the for the judges, for the referee that are on the ice, because a lot of things sometimes happen really quick. Yeah. But um, the last few years we have a lot of camera, so they can they're able to, you know, stop the race. Or wait for the end of the race and go watch, rewatch the video and mm. in slow motion, so they can see exactly what happened mm. and who create the contact, so they can disqualify and advance when they can the right person. Mm-hmm. Okay. You know, I have a question for you. And um, back in Turin, two thousand and six, you said um, that was your first Olympic medal. You were fifteen back then, and this year you were the oldest short track speed skater to stand on the world cup uh, podium so it's it's you've had a very long career and how does it feel to look back after all these years uh sometimes it makes me feel old <laughs> because you, i should have, oh i should have given you a warning that was my bad <laughs> no don't worry um but, you know, sometimes I have that feeling, but it goes away pretty quick because, uh, I mean, I've been doing what I love, so I wouldn't change it with anything. Mm. If you could start over again, you wouldn't become a professional fisherwoman. Uh, maybe. Maybe. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> you never know. You never know. You never know for sure. I think that's all the time you have for us today. We know that we took you out of a very busy training schedule. Um, what's what's on the plan for the rest of your day? Well, right now I have time to go home, have a little meal, and like I said, maybe a nap, and then I'll <laughs> be back here uh, at the ice ring for a second ice session. And okay. you know, we're we're it's a, some busy day because the, the last, these are last this is last week that we can push a little bit before mm-hmm. you know the Olympics. So they're still a little bit of heart training right now and then starting next week it will be way easier hopefully oh yeah awesome. and then you get to hit the beach exactly <laughs> and we're yes. definitely looking forward to meeting you here in beijing then at the olympics so wishing you all thank the you. best then for your training and thank you so much for your time thank you ariana really thank appreciate you. it well thank you guys and thank, all thank the best you. of luck at the olympics exactly we'll see you soon go rock it thanks <laughs> thank you, you. Soon. ciao <laughs> ciao ciao bye bye I feel like we should hit the uh, the track as well now. I know, right? I'm, know I'm quite in the mood excited to... to just hit the slopes. Really. Yeah, I mean, it must be such an adrenaline rush to be racing around that track at those speeds. You know what? Like when I when I watched those videos and I was seeing like how these people mm-hmm. are just like you know getting into that curve at what kind of speed and yep. just getting so close to each other with these razor sharp blades, it's quite intimidating. So I definitely. Phew, I have huge respect for them. Yeah, for sure. It's yeah. like Formula One racing, but with your body, exactly, right? Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Perfectly put. But I think we might be a bit too, I'm a bit too old for that sort of thing. My, old, my back and everything. Oh, you know, please. Well, I feel knees old. knees and joints. <laughs> well, so we stick to skis and snowboards. How oh, about yes. that? Oh, yes. Okay, okay. So 
Let's hit the slopes. All right. Thank you all so much for tuning into our live stream today. We hope you had a fantastic time watching our conversation with Ariana Fontana. And hopefully you'll get to see her stand on the podium at Beijing 2022 as well. Exactly. And we will definitely be awaiting you guys then there too. Not on the podium, though. <laughs> we'll be in the rafters. Well, we got gold medals out of chocolate. <laughs> right. Thank you so much. Right. And we'll Thank see you next you. time. See you guys next Bye time. Bye-bye. Let's go. I'm going to grab... Hit the slopes. Hit the slopes. You're going to grab your board? Of course.